yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? Let me make sure we got some volume here. Hold on right quick. All right, we good, we good. What's going on, everybody? Hey, this is your host, Dimitri, with the PPP, Panthers Prime Podcast, man. Hey, man, I had to run over here to the bus to get everything rolling. I'm on the bus right now early to make sure I'm here for this live press conference, man. How you guys feel, though, man? How you guys feel, man? Uh, how you guys feel about it, man? Poppy, what's up, man? Poppy said Bryce Young, 4K, 30 touchdowns, NFC South champs, 11 and 6. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. What up, man? What's up, Chris? What up, Chris? A healthy O-line would change Brock's performance. He would be elite by the end of the season. We'll see. Nick Tristate. Yo, Nick. Got to talk to you, man. Got to talk to you, man. Got to talk to you, man. Um, shoot me an email. PanthersPrimePodcast at gmail.com. Got to talk to you, man. Uh, nigga, my, what's up, my guy? Up early. Let's go. You know it, man. You know it. PVP, don't let these charades fool you. Last year, <laughs> we had the blueprint. Hey, trust me. It ain't fooling me, man. <laughs> it ain't fooling me at all, man. Hey, I'm, I'm, it's just Panther content. I ain't getting hype again until I see the first game of the, of the season. We ain't going down that road again, man. We ain't doing that. But we going, hey, we just waiting to see. Here we go right here. Let's get, let's get going. The Bank of America Stadium. Thank you all for being here. I'm Anish Shroff, the play-by-play announcer for the Carolina Panthers. And before we get started, there are a few people I'd like to recognize. We'd like to extend a special welcome to our current players, to our Panther legends who are here. All of our honored guests members of the media, and those of you who are tuning in and watching. We are here today to share how the Carolina Panthers are moving forward. And with that, I'd like to welcome the owner of the Carolina Panthers, Mr. David Tepper. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, exciting day today. Um, I'm excited to introduce to you our new head coach, Dave Canales. Take a stand up. And our new, new president of football operations, general manager, Dan Morgan. I'm also thrilled to welcome Brant Tillis, who's Served us, who, who will serve as our executive vice president of football operations. Brand is with us today. Stand up, Brand. His wife Elizabeth is with him. Um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Dan and Dave. They are tremendous people, well respected, and they are both connectors. Dan has 14 years of front office experience all throughout the league. When Dan was a player, he kept the defense connected and on the same page. And I've seen those traits with him translate throughout this building with everyone, including scouts, players, and coaches. He keeps everybody moving in the right direction. As a player, he had a relentless pursuit of excellence, which we will bring to this organization. Dave Canales brings that same quality to players and coaches and on the field every day. Is a track record of bringing the best out of players. He is a connector. He takes the time to work with players to create an environment that will earn their trust and maximize their ability. Each of them brings experience from winning programs. They share, they share the same vision for our organization or, and are aligned on how they will get there. Um, I'd like to ask Dan and Dave to join me on stage, but i also like to recognize Dan's wife, Ashley, and his family, and Dave's wife, Lizzie, and his family. So guys, come on upstairs.
Aikman. Dan, would you like to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, it's a great honor to be named the general manager of the Carolina Panthers, uh, along with Dave Canales as the head coach. Um, super excited to, to work with Dave. Me and Dave, me and Dave have known each other for many years now. And, Seven uh, years. Yeah, and this is a dream come true for both of us. Um, the way Dave carries himself uh, is a lot of the way that I carry myself, which is with honor, integrity, and we're going to work our butts off. So, um, first, I, you know, I just want to start off by thanking David and Nicole Tepper. Uh, it's been great working with you guys. Uh, it's going to get better and better. We're going to – there's going to be a process. There's going to be alignment in our building. And we're going to do things the right way right way to build a championship team here. And obviously it's a great honor to be named the GM of the Carolina Panthers after playing here seven years with greats like Mike Rucker. One of my best friends is here. Vinny Churchill, he's here. Mike Colbert's here. Thomas Davis, Jonathan Stewart, all these guys here. Musin Muhammad, like, you guys are the best, man. Like, and Doors are, doors are always open. Um, you guys are family, and we're going to make it a family environment, and that's the kind of environment that me and Dave want to create around here. So you guys are family. We're going to do everything in our power to build this team the right way, not only on the field but off the field. The type of character guys that we bring in are going to be guys that love football, play with passion, and play with the relentless pursuit of greatness. There's several people that I'd like to say thank you to. Um, Trent Kirshner, who's out in Seattle right now, he called me 14 years ago. He called me and he said, I think you'd be a really good scout, Dan. And I uh, I didn't know if I wanted to do this this or not, but 14 years later, here I am as, a, as the GM. So I guess he has a pretty good eye for who's, who's good talent evaluator. So I thank him. Um, John Schneider and Pete Carroll. They were so much fun to work with. I learned so much um, as a young scout out there. I was uh, just a pro scout driving guys to the airport, you know, putting the work in. And John and Pete were just so, so great to work under. And, you know, to be able to, for me and Dave, to be able to, to learn under them is just, I mean, you can't get that experience anywhere. So I want to thank them. Uh, Brandon Bean. Joe Shane and Sean McDermott, who I worked with in Buffalo. Um, again, learning from great mentors, people that know football, people that know how to put an org organization together. Um, again, I can't thank them enough for everything they've done, and they've continued to help me to this day. Uh, Terry and Ken Pagola uh, with the Buffalo Bills. Um, can't thank them enough for welcoming me in and my family in. Um, they're the best, uh, just great people, just like Mr. and Mrs. Tepper. Um, there's some great ownership in this league. Scott Fitter, I want to thank him for bringing me back to Carolina and giving me this opportunity. Um, Scott's one of my great friends, and, and I thank him for everything that he's done for me. All of the Seahawks and Bills players, um, I want to thank them. Because um, let's tell it how it is, you know, all the sacrifices those players have had and the hard work and the, and the dedication, we wouldn't be where we were if it wasn't for the players. I mean, the players are what make this game. And I just want to thank everyone involved player-wise for, for being great and, you know, just kind of developing the relationships with them. Um, I'd obviously like to thank my family, my wife, Ashley, uh, my daughter, Lexi, my son, Brady, and my youngest, Callie. Um, I love you guys so much, and I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. Uh, all the hard work, all the dedication, um, all the sacrifice, you know, dad being at work and maybe missing some games. Um, but I, I thank you guys, and I love you guys so much. Um, to my parents, uh, I want to thank them for instilling the values in me. Um, honor, integrity, um, hard work, dedication, all those things that I carry with me to this day. And I'll
just want to thank them for the, always being there for me. I want to pass it off to Dave. Thanks, Dan. Good morning. Um, just what a moment of gratitude. What a moment of uh, just thankfulness. You know, I, I can, uh, you know, in the room this big, and of course for everyone who's watching, you know, I think we can all kind of think about the people who believed in us first, um, who gave us our first opportunity to uh, show who we are, to express ourselves. And so first I want to thank uh, David and Nicole for, for giving me this opportunity. This is a dream of a lifetime that Lizzie and I have had. Um, that goes back 20 years um, and really, you know, the last 10 years really honing this opportunity to get in front of an ownership and to sell a vision of who we can become. Um, it's in my DNA. It's a part of who I am. And uh, for allowing me to be me and recognizing that, so I want to thank you, um, Christy, as well, just uh, throughout the process. You know, it was um, I learned so much just in those couple of days um, just how to interact and how to, um, to try to just keep the focus on the things that are important and, and feeling what your um, vision is for this team and feeling that alignment that's happening with Dan and I uh, to fit right into that. I'm just really appreciative there. Um, I got to thank the Bucks organization for believing in me, giving me a shot. I was in Seattle for 13 years, um, but I get my first offensive coordinator opportunity way on the other side of the country. Um, and so my family, you know, uh, Lizzie and the kids moved out last April. I didn't quite make it to my one-year anniversary there, uh, which would have been February 18th. Um, so this part has happened really fast, but this is something that I've been working on. I really want to thank the Glazer family um, and uh, <clears throat> Joel and Darcy, Jason Light, Todd Bowles um, for giving me that chance for uh, just letting me let it rip, giving me the confidence to be able to do that. I'm really appreciative there. Um, which takes me back to my time in Seattle. And to formulate an identity, to formulate a football DNA that wins 10 out of 13 years to the playoffs. I just coached in my 20th and 21st playoff games uh, this, these last past couple of weeks. Um, and so I'm just really appreciative of Pete Carroll, who pushed me to think about the next thing. Quit looking just at the quarterback. Quit just staring at the wide receiver's route. Open your eyes. What's happening with these combos? You see what the defense is doing? Did you notice we're playing a lot more of this coverage this camp? Open your eyes. Think bigger. Be prepared. I can't thank Pete enough. Um, and uh, I'm going to miss a bunch of other names. But at that point right there, I just want to also just thank the players, um, the guys who, who really just did a fantastic job in it and – most recently, you know, Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield, these guys that I got to just spend so much life with um, to learn, to watch them grow as men, to watch them grow as football players. Um, it's their fault that I'm here. And that's the bottom line is, is it's, a, it's about the players. Um, my family, um, just growing up in a family who's a, just a, a family of dreamers and self-starters in Carson, California, the Canales family, and then my extended family, the Hendersons, my wife's family, who we moved to in Seattle, were with them for 13 years. How they walked the the hard the hard days, the frustrating days in the profession, the frustrating and hard days in our marriage and our family, walking alongside of us, um, and just their undying support, prayers, all of my family members and friends that have um, been supportive over the years. Um, my kids, Ashby, Ben, B, Mai Mai. Amaya, um, who lend their dad to this profession for six months at a time. Um, but we fight for each other. We fight for windows. We fight to connect, um, to listen to each other and to grow together. Um, and finally, my wife, Lizzie. really her fault. 20 years ago, I'm, I'm the head JV coach at Carson High School. Fired up. I'm so excited. We go to play Venice High School. It's my first game coaching. She's sitting, sitting up in the stands with about 35 crazy parents. Um, and uh, we got smoked 34 to 13 that day. It was the greatest day of my life because I had found it. I found my passion. And after two years of doing that, she comes to me and she knew all I wanted to do was be the head coach at Carson High School. That's what I want to do, take it, get us back on top, um, try to win championships and do all that. And she said, hey, don't get me wrong. I love your dream. You're really good at this. 
I think you can go as far as you want, and I got your back, and I'll make it happen, whatever we need to do. And, and she did, and she worked three jobs at times, um, and she told me the hard truths. Um, and when I had problems with players or coaches, said, you know what you need to do? You need to sit down and have those conversations. And she's just been everything to me. This is our journey. This is our dream. Um, and we've been so excited and, and prepared for this opportunity. Um, so I think, you know, I love you, babe. Um, so that's just kind of the journey, um, how I got here, started off with the dream in, in high school and, uh, that turned into junior college and, uh, at El Camino college, I learned the spread pass game from a man named John Featherstone, rest in peace. Um, and that's where I met Pete Carroll and Pete gave me an opportunity to come along with him. I spent 14 formative, amazing years. I don't know if you've heard the saying, see a little, see a lot. Well, if you can sit at that same porch, you'll watch the world go by. Watch, watch the NFL world come through the trends, the changes, the players, the generations of players, how to communicate all happened in one place, in one city. For me, um, just was a recipe for forming a really solid identity and a belief in a way to win. Um, and I was able to um, fortunately take that to Tampa last year and to – show what can happen, not what can't we do, but what can we do, who are our guys, and how do we build an offense around these people, and I'm excited to be able to do that here with the whole team, to find our strengths, make them second nature, to find our weaknesses, and work them into strengths, and I'm so excited to do it with Dan, with Brant, with Mr. and Mrs. Tepper, and all of us in the building, really, that every time those players walk into this building, they're going to feel that intentionality, they're going to feel that this is about them. This is about building a place for them to thrive. And so um, I'm excited to be here and uh, to do this with you, Dan. Likewise. Um, you know, just kind of wanted to talk about, like, the type of players that we want to bring in here and just DNA-wise. Um, first of all, we, we, we need to find those leaders, those competitors, as Jay Stu would say, those dogs. No living being should ever eat processed food for every single meal of their life. Good, real food is simple. It looks like food, it smells like food. It's what dogs are supposed to be eating. We really don't want people to. Bank of America Stadium to where people get excited about coming to see our team. Um, we're super passionate about bringing a team that the fans can be proud of. Um, that our, you know, players can be proud of. Like when when they when we, when teams drive up to this stadium, we want them to fear that logo. The logo has to be feared again because right now, it's not feared. So we got to get that back. But I think it starts with getting the right type of players, and it's guys like you, like Thomas Davis, Jonathan Stewart, Hussein Muhammad. We got to get those type of guys. Um, we want players with grit. You know, we want players like Steve Smith, you know, play with a chip on your shoulder. No holds bar. He's not taking any prisoners. Uh, we need those type of guys. Instincts and tenacity of Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley. Guys like that that can make plays. Uh, we need playmakers out there. We need competitors of like Jake DeLone. Um, guys that they're going to compete in everything they do, and they're going to be pissed off, and they're not going to they're not going to stop until they win. Those are the type of guys we need. You know, I, I remember in 2003 we had our playoff game here, and I remember those towels out there, the the white towels waving around. That's my dream for this organization. Talking to I was talking to David about that today, and we need to we need to get that back, that excitement back here. And that's our goal, is to roll up our sleeves, work hard, and find those type of players that are going to help us get back to home playoff games and winning. And that's, that's what we want to be about here. Mm -hmm. And for me, like just the, the marriage and the connection of it with Dan and I is just to create an environment, an environment that's set up, um, that our players have every resource at their disposal, that they come in here and they got a plan for their body, they got a plan for their mind, they got a plan for their whole person as they walk in, and that this building stops everything when our players come in and say, how can I help you? How can I serve you? That's the type of place that we have to be. Um, it, it's 
definitely speaks to the coaching staff being developmentally minded. I don't care about what we can't do. What can we do? Who are these players that we have? And how are we going to maximize those strengths on a daily basis? We're looking for championship moments, championship days, and that's got to be a full-on commitment every single time we walk in here. Um, so for me, it's about building that culture, building our language, making sure that we're using specific language. There's going to be a bunch of buzzwords being thrown around. I don't like synonyms. We all speak the same language, and we're heading in the same direction with that alignment that we talk about. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to create that culture. Culture is what you celebrate. Culture is also what you condemn, and you say, this is a horrible-looking play. Look what happened right here, guys. Boo this man, please, somebody. And then, like, at the same time, finding great opportunities from practice, from games, to celebrate it. That's how you create culture, and I'm really excited to be able to do that. Um, the next piece of it is we got to get our football right. Let's just make it about the football. There's no storylines. There's no agendas. It's about good football. we got to play good football on both sides of the ball, be willing to look at it truthfully and improve and take the next step and improve and, and, and cap, capitalize on these moments to just see that growth and watch what it takes us. If we go after it every single day for a really long time, and for my players, I always say, guys, just get better the next day. Do that for about 10 years and look back and see where you went, see where you got. Um, and for me, if it was this simple, how do we do that? It's our football philosophy here. It's all about the ball. We got to be crazy about getting the ball on defense. We got to be raking at the quarterback's elbow when we come, when we're, when we're sacking the quarterback. Every tackle has got to be an opportunity to get this ball back. Offensively, everything we do from the protection calls all the way to how we carry it to our receivers transitioning in the quarterback, the decisions all is about taking care of the ball. Plus one equals 82% win. That's a historical number. If we can just be one turnover better than our opponent, look what we can do. We'll set ourselves up for success. And that's, if I can make it that simple, what if I told you in the wild card round that the quarterbacks and teams that didn't turn it over won the game? It was as simple as that. We even talk in X's and O's and what the style and philosophy of our offense or defense is. If we make it about the ball, we can go as far as we want to and put ourselves in a position to be a championship team. Um, with that, I think uh, we're going to open it up to questions for the media. Yeah, we'll open it for questions. So if you would, please raise your hand. We have microphones that we'll pass around. And as we call on you, or we'll pass to you. So please raise your hand. We'll you All mic. I want to hear is, is Evero going to come back as a defensive yeah. coordinator? So they better first, ask that uh, question. question will come from Steve Reed, followed by Carla Gephardt. Hey, guys. Uh, Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Uh, Dave, certainly uh, welcome to Charlotte and uh, Dan, congratulations on your promotion. I think you guys answered all our questions in your preamble there. But um, li listen, I, th I think fans want to know, you know, it, it, it's been six years since this team, it, it, you know, been to the playoffs. It's been eight since they, they've won a playoff game. What do you feel like is the, pl the blueprint to get there? And secondly, most maybe most importantly, how long do you think it'll take? I think it's, I think it's about alignment and process. Uh, we got to have processes in place and we got to be aligned in our building and we're all moving towards the, the same direction and that's towards a championship. So, you know, to put it simply, I think that we just have to, we got to roll our sleeves up and we got to get to work and we got to find the type of players that we want to, that we want to infuse into our locker room, into our building, get, get winners in this building. My timeline's today. How can we win today? Let's have a great uh, interaction here. Let's start talking about what football you can expect out of us. Um, and so today, this looks like a win for me. And that's just the way I think, just approaching every single day. It's first and 10. I got a new set of downs. My whole call sheet's at my disposal um, and got a bunch of fantastic people to go to work with today. Uh, it looks like putting a great staff together for me right now. Um, it looks like getting with Dan, looking at this roster, and really coming up with a with an airtight plan for who we want to become. Carla Gethard of Fox Charlotte. My question's for Dave. You mentioned your experience with quarterbacks. I want to know how that experience might help continue to develop Bryce Young in his second year. Uh, attention to the details, first and foremost. Um, 
it all starts off with relationship. Uh, Bryce and I just getting to know each other. Um, I want him to know that I have his best interest at heart. I want him to be the best possible version of himself. That's the same approach that I've taken since I've been coaching position um, in the NFL. And um, that's really the approach I want to take with him. Some of the uh, some of the other things that kind of come to mind, thinking about the quarterbacks that I've worked with um, over the last couple of years, is we are going to become what Bryce is great at in the past game. We're going to grow to the capacity that he can handle. Um, there's got to be a commitment and a discipline about that. There was a growth curve there with Baker. Here's where we're at today. Based on the information we have, let's get into these situations to see where he looks most confident when I see that back foot planted in the ground and that ball rips out of there without any hesitation. I know we've got something. Let's find more of those. Let's put it in three different personnels and a couple formations and motions. Yeah, David Newton, ESPN.com. I wanted to ask you, welcome first. I uh, wanted to ask you, what made this job attractive? And secondly, what were your thoughts coming to an organization that had fired three head coaches in five years? Yeah, so first and foremost, in Seattle, like we never were anywhere. God close dang, to boy, that's a question. Pick. And the more that I got ready for this interview and started watching Bryce, looking at my notes from his eval, I mean, that's just a year ago. You know, we're, we're evaluating him as a player, as a person, and with all the information that we could, I just got more and more fired up about the opportunity to have this amazing talent. And he's the guy. He's the right guy that you all that we all talk about when we have that quarterback, that, that franchise, face of the franchise type of player. Um, and that got me really excited. And then just on top of that, you know, the I played against the Panthers twice, and, and the job that E.J. Evero did with the defense, was really hard really hard to deal with great sound football playing hard some great players in some spots and just the whole thing coming together and then as it got to you know Dan and I have some history so then I thought shoot if you look at some of the successful organizations there's a dynamic relationship between the head coach and the GM um, and then of course as I've gotten to meet the Teppers too to feel their com their competitive nature their passion for what they want here what they want to see when they come out to the practice field and just kind of knowing I can be that without faking anything, without having to make something up. I just, I just felt more and more like this was going to be a great home. And, and I was really hoping, you know, as, as they were sorting through the names that I would, I would come out on as one of the top candidates. About coming to an organization that has fired three coaches in five years. Oh, I don't think that way. I'm talking about today. I want to win today. And so for me, um, coming into the situation, you know, same like Tampa, it's like, I want to look at what we have, what can we do, not what can't we do, and that's just my mentality. Hey, guys. Scott hey, you want to answer that question? Observer. I've got one for Dan and one for Dave. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Yourself, I just wondered if you can talk about, you said you need, you know, more dogs, more good players. Uh, what that looks like specifically, like where you think this team is lacking and where you want to build it. And then, Dave, I just wonder if you could talk specifically about, as a play caller, what you try to do, because you sound very passionate about that and, mm. you know, deep balls, all that stuff. Yeah, I think I think when you talk about building the roster, Scott, um, you know, I think it's about – it starts with competitors, guys that are passionate about football. Uh, we want to – we want to draft guys and sign guys in free agency that are passionate about football, that love football. Um, we have a lot of guys in the locker room right now that love football and are passionate, but we need to get more. And, you know, the dog part of it, we need guys that are hungry to go out there and inflict pain on their opponents. Uh, we, need, we need guys' toughness. We need physicality. We need those type of things. I mean, just to put it plainly. Um, we haven't had enough of that, and that's going to be our DNA to where when people drive up to Bank of America Stadium, they know they're in for a dog fight. So that's what we want to create here. Uh, play calling, just thought process there. Like, you know, we ended up becoming us. That's one of the things I was really proud of is just kind of looking at, like, what run game fits us best? What's the best thing for Chuba? Um, what's the best pass game for Bryce, you know, with, with the different pieces that we have? Um, on the offensive side, you know, um, we were able to find an identity and how to do that and win down the stretch um, to put ourselves in position to play good football 
and beat a really good team in the wild card round and give the Lions a run for their money there. Um, that's a really good team, a great environment and challenge for us there. Um, and uh, there were a couple games that got pretty hot there, you know, and this is my first time around, so I'm really excited to see the growth there too. Um, some people in the building that we have who have done it at a high level for a long time, you know, Jim Caldwell being one of those um, who's just got an eye for offense, an eye for this whole organizational piece. And I'm, I'm excited to, for my growth in the second year um, as Colin plays. And the mentality is, what are they giving us today? Um, and just being, having that variety, having the marriage of the run and pass, um, things that start off the same but end up being different, you know, to have those, those nuances and plays and, um, and utilize my staff so I can have good information on game day. Dave, are there particular things you recall about Dan as a young scout in Seattle, his first, you know, entry into that part of the profession? And I don't care about that, man. I want to hear about what y'all going to do with the Panthers. What's going on with Everett? We All this little sweet stuff. That's nice. That's nice. Real quick, man. Eternal, thank you for the super chat, man. I want to hear Dan talk. Facts. Facts. Dave over here talking about Cotton Candy. I don't want to hear that, man. Hard time, you know thing that he had an opinion about stuff um, but right off the bat you know just as a former player he comes in and is like he could just see it he could just tell what a good football player was and um, I wasn't by no means was I an expert at that time but I just you know I have a high value of my ability to evaluate and Dan always had his opinions and um, and it was very clear thoughts that that he felt strongly about so that impressed me um, early on and as we grew to get to know each other it was just kind of like he was such a natural um, in this world of evaluating players. Hey guys, Joe Person back here in the fourth row. I've got one for each of you. So I'll uh, start with Dan. Hearing a lot of talk about alignment, how much of that and how you guys wanted to restructure the front office and build Dave's staff has to do with last season when there were lots of reports of factions among the staff and even going all the way up to ownership. I think it has to do everything with just moving forward. And, you know, we're not looking back. We're looking ahead. Um, we all want to be aligned. The business side, the football side, the locker room, the weight room, everybody on the same page, same mission, same vision. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about alignment. The whole building has to be on the same page. If we want to win, we all have to be on the same page. Nick Tristate, I appreciate you for that super day. chat, man. See, I definitely want to hear him ask about Everett. That's a fact, man. We, gotta, we just we all have to be aligned, plain and simple. Dave, um, you mentioned Pajero. What's your comp? What's your confidence level? Is is the defensive staff going to be back intact? Oh my gosh! I mean, just the respect factor that I have going against them. I know I know the scheme going against it. I'm really excited to learn more about the ins and outs as far as how the calls come in, the adjustments and all that. I just know it was really difficult on me for years, uh, whether it was in Seattle going against the Rams and that family um, or this year just going against EJ twice. So, And this is, this is really important for me, um, especially as a, as a first-time head coach who's like, I'm here to make sure we get our football right, especially on the offensive side, that we have that continuity um, with the players, with, with EJ, you know, just being able to have the mentality that I saw that was really challenging to play against. Yes, I mean, this, this is, you know, for me, like what, a huge piece um, of what we're doing. Dan, you uh, right, right here in third row, uh, you, you mentioned. Uh, That's all I need to hear. Telling you that he you coming back. That's all I need to hear. When did you realize? That's all that I need to hear, your, baby. Maybe your, your plan was after playing. Um, you know, I think once I got done playing, um, you know, you're always, you know, as a former player, I know a lot of guys here, like, you know, you, you try to figure out what is the next step. Uh, it sounds like he's coming back. Because you reach your goal at such a young age. It sounds like he's coming back. Like, That's retired. all. I mean, I know he and said like respect, but it sounds like he's coming back. I mean, what? Like, well, what am I, gonna I don't do think that you would want to ask a head coach how you pull out, I mean, ask a defensive coordinator how you get calls out and how you do this and do that. If you ain't gonna come, if you ain't gonna bring this guy back, back. what I knew best, which was football. Um, ah, y'all said he was blanking with it. Ah, from some of the he wasn't definite with it. Ah, man. On the Buffalo and learn under Brandon Bean, like 
it's been invaluable. Gosh, um, man. They, they've taught me a lot, and, the, and they've really made me who I am today in terms of, of an evaluator. Dave, Dan, Jorge. Canel's about to piss me off. Y'all right, man. He ain't answer that question. Uh, quick question for each of you. I'll start with you, Dave. Y'all right. He ain't answer uh, that question. You a little bit of analytics uh, when you went into talking about the plus 182% for a win. You, we all obviously know the turnaround that – Russ, Gino, and Baker have done. How do you plan to implement that uh, those resources and those analytics when analyzing Bryce's Bryce's uh, trajectory and the potential that he could be? You know, I haven't really gotten fully into the details on that. Um, I, I watched a, a good amount of Bryce going into the interview process, but right now I'm going back through the games, kind of looking at the story of the season, you know, and, and the, the critical and pivotal moments in those games. So, um, you know, speaking about a specific plan there, you know, there's a there's a bunch of critical variables. You know, I don't want to man, I might have to go back and listen to this, this again, point, man, but, because um, just know, like, it starts with the ball. For this me, audio um, is there's stupid. There's a way to win, fo- win games in the NFL. But, uh, it's defense, it's I think he's coming back, man. I don't like the way he answered the question. Though. You, you guys are right about that. In the past games, getting that ball out in two seven or less. That's a critical deal for me. It's been a, <laughs> been a really important number for us. In Seattle and being able to just track that for decision making, for route timing, the protection and all that, it all kind of fits into this uh, really good brand of football that um, that is complimentary um, as we see as we go through the uh, season. Dan, this one is uh, for you. Uh, bringing Dave in and having the conversations to bring Dave in. He's currently uh, the only head coach of Mexican descent. Uh, it's no secret that the Carolinas in the Charlotte area has the largest Mexican demographic uh, in, in this part. Um, talk me through that thought process of that representation for a large fan base that is quickly growing year by year as well. I think, first of all, you know, diversity is a, is a big part of what we do here with the Carolina Panthers. Um, you know, Dave just happened to be, you know, Mexican, you know, American, and, you know, also a really good coach and a really qualified coach. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy that he's here with us, and, uh, you know, we're really blessed to have him. Guys, Brett Jensen with WBT Radio over – there you go. There you go. Uh, Dave, this is for you. Um, in terms of you've worked with short quarterbacks in the past, successful with Russell Wilson, successful with Baker Mayfield, and you also had a very tall quarterback with Geno Smith. Is there a special way to coach shorter quarterbacks, quarterbacks under six feet, as opposed to a taller quarterback? I think there are certain challenges. Um, I'm not going to go and tell the whole uh, NFC South what those uh, advantages are. I think that's kind of a pri- proprietary deal that we're going to own here. Um, but I will say that there are just certain things you can do to help. Um, there are there are ways to find what that quarterback's comfortable seeing. Um, oh you know, a guy snap! Like Drew Brees, who's about my height, which is which is still short in terms of a six foot seven tackle. You know, so whether you're 5'11", or whether you're 6'1", you can't really see over any of the linemen. So um, there's an approach to it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, it's about decision-making um, and just kind of make – He just that said that a six-something, a six-foot-under quarterback available is hard for them to see over the old line From a visual standpoint. Mm. Guys, Kyle Bailey, oh, boy. WFNZ back right. Uh, Dan, Let's see what they're going to do. Uh, congratulations to you both, by the way. You mentioned Brant Tillis. Uh, seems rather significant to be bringing over a guy who's been a part of multiple Super Bowls and uh, six straight conference championship trips. What it, what impact do you envision him having and your working relationship? What does that look like? And then for you, Dave, um, you know, a lot of guys in your position, after just a year of calling plays, successfully, albeit, might decide, hey, one more season, you know, two more seasons before I'm ready to run my own operation. How did you know personally that now was the time for you to become a head coach? Or was it as simple as this was your only offer? You know, I think uh, having Brand here, you know, it's really a blessing for us to hey, have somebody with the you know it. that he has. You know uh, it. I want them to dig a little bit more in that Evero, you know, um, that little Evero situation. Able to work with them every day and but you know it, Abe Marshall. About the roster and kind of fit all the pieces of the, of the puzzle together. Um, and to have Brand, you know, kind of work side to side with him, that's invaluable. So I'm super excited that he's here and uh, – I can't wait until he takes all these coaches. They did ask uh, about Evero. It was a very, very blanket statement, though, man. He said that, you know, he, he, uh, 
He's been what he said, me. man. He said that he basically uh, so uh me, this oh, let me go back to it. True. Um, I yeah, he said he got a lot of respect for him. Want to ask him how he get the plays out kind of quick or whatever his thought process on the plays. But the last part, it was hard for me to hear because the Panthers got the worst audio in the whole NFL. But um, so I, I guess it sounds like Ever was coming really back because you want not ask like no grown man plan, no questions on how you get the plays out if you ain't going to bring them back. I'll punch uh, Canellas. Let, like, Let me not say that. Let me not say that. You know, lead self. Let me not say that. Lead organizations. <laughs> and that's been an approach and a mentality that I've had for a while. So when this opportunity came up and then I started seeing the pieces coming, um, I just got so fired up about it. And uh, I'm really ready to serve this team. 7.30 the game, ESPN Charlotte. Um, you talked about that alignment. I guess in terms of the alignment, even the power structure, what does that look like between ownership, front office, and coaching staff? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's going to be a strong bond. Um, it's going to be a daily communication between the front office, between ownership, between the head coach, and it's just alignment on the roster. It's alignment on just everyday thinking, like what are we about, what's the vision, are we what are we doing the the best things to to reach that vision and and that mission every single day? So it's just constant communication, and it's just being aligned in everything. Hey Doug, who, who who's we? You said why are we reaching? What do you mean by that? Hey, Ain't nobody Mike reaching. Clark, Spectrum News One, Dave. Welcome to the Carolinas, Dan. Thanks, Mike. Congratulations. Thanks, Mike. It's been a jersey journey. Uh, you guys talked about alignment and everything else, but. You're both on a, 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 okay, I got you, Andrew. Yeah, I, they need to ask Evero. Evero need to have his own press conference. Are you guys feeling any amount of pressure? Yeah, he, to he need to, to begin uh, has it pay, too. You wanted to go, Dan, <laughs> and you were part of a Super Bowl team. And Dave, I know you want to follow in those footsteps. No pressure. All he got to um, do is get that run get that run scheme going like better, man, that run great. defense. A lot of hunger to get this organization back to where it needs to be, which is back in the playoffs, which is competing for championships year after year. So there's a urgency with that, um, that that we're striving towards every single day. Can I say I'm nervous? Is that all right? I mean, you know, to be honest, you know, just getting this opportunity and I've got a ton of excitement about it. Um, I got a lot of things that I'm, I'm ready to, to put to the test and that's been a lot of theory, you know, um, from a leadership standpoint. But, yeah, this is a big task. This is serious for me. This is a, this is a great opportunity. Um, and so I don't take that lightly, but at the same time, you know, like Dan just hit, like I'm fired up about it and, uh, I love a great challenge and I didn't shy away from the Tampa job. And there was a lot of people that kind of looked at that and thought like, what are you thinking? You got a great situation with Gino in Seattle. And I just was like, I'm going to bet on us. And, uh, I'm going to look at what we do have and see if I can make the most. It's about maximizing. Somebody ran into me and was like, you guys really overachieved. And I just hate that term. I love the thought of maximizing, just getting every last drop out of everyone involved, um, all together in a worthy cause. Yeah, I ain't so, never see those reports. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I ain't never see those reports. I realize how weighty this is. All right, we have time for two more questions. We'll go in the back and then wrap up with Alex Zietlow from the phone. Mike, hey, Marshall, uh, what? Charlotte, Dan, at the moment, <laughs> you guys do not have a first-round uh, draft pick. How oh. high uh, is it on the to-do list to get one? It's it's not really high. I mean, we have the 33rd pick, which, you know, is essentially a late first-round pick. Um, we're just going to draft good players. And, you know, hopefully at 33, I think there'll be a good player there. You know, if we choose to move back, if we choose to move up, you know, that's to be seen. Um, but we're going to plan. We're going to have a plan. And uh, we're going to execute on that plan. Hello. Uh, to your right. Uh, Alex Zetlow with the Charlotte Observer. Dave, welcome. Dan, again, thank you so I much. I like the answer. Um, Dave, you have shown that you are uh, enthusiastic online and are willing to engage with the fan base on social media. Uh, when did that start? Is that going to continue? And why do you think that's important? Oh, uh, Just I think it's what's important to me is that we all grow to have a relationship um, and as we have a chance to get into more detail about what we're looking for from a football standpoint, my hope is that I can show you what to look for and what we're going to try to become. From a philosophical standpoint, of course, the, the whys and the hows, that's going to be 
depending on what our players are. My hope is that if I if I put this out there and I say this is who we're going to be, that we're able to have this relationship where like you keep me accountable on this. You you said we're going to do we're going to play this brand of football. You guys are crazy about the ball. We had three turnovers last week. We were minus two or we were minus three. And I'll be able to say that's that's a great point. That's not the kind of football we want to play. So my hope um, is that we can kind of grow in that relationship as we as we have that expectation for who we're going to become. I don't know if I answered everything. Is there another part of your question there? Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, now we would ask at the TVs, if you would make your way down the hall, we have an opportunity for one-on-ones with our head coach and president and general manager. And for our working writing press, if you would make your way to our media workroom, we'll have some player availability coming up very shortly. Thank you very much. All right. So... All right. <laughs> okay. So, I, I, I mean, I knew this wasn't going to sway me left or right, regardless to whatever they were going to say. I'm not going to get fooled or pulled into the whole situation from last year, man, how the Carolina Panthers baited us with the blueprint and all that other stuff, man. It sounded good. It sounded nice. It was all right. Let me move this comment. It was okay, you know. Uh, just, just, just it was, it was just, it was just all right, you know. I mean, we heard from my head coach. We heard from, you know, Dan. Dan said something important that, you know, we, uh, you know, we're not. Uh oh. Hold on. I got, I got Sh- Shannon Sharp talking in the background. God dang. Okay, there we go. I mean, it was cool. I, I, I I'm not reading too much into into whatever. Dan made a point saying that we want to get good players here, which I think is has always been the um the thought process uh since Dan Morgan has taken over as a GM and president of of, of um football operations to get good players in. Players who aren't good aren't gonna be here. So, you know, that's kind of given. Um comes down to Dave Canellis. Um, you know, the answer about Evero was kind of kind of vague. I need to go back and listen to it. It was kind of vague. Um, I don't think that you ask a guy, you know, his thought process on how he get plays out and stuff like that, you know, would be actually a good thing if you're actually going to go ahead and fire this guy. So I think Evero is pretty much safe. I want to give at least about a 75% uh, thought that he will be coming back to Carolina. Um, the draft question, the draft question to me, it's, it's 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 simple, you know, it, it, and and he's right. It is a it is a late a late first round. Thirty third pick is a late first round. Um, you move back, you get more draft picks more than likely. You move up, you know, you're going after uh, going after a specific, you know, player. So you know, I'm kind of like I'm kind of I kind of feel where Dan's coming from. You know, to me, it's not really that big of a. It's big, but it ain't like we don't have to pull our hair out whether or not we're going to move up to the first or drop back, you know, drop back from the 33rd, you know? So I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I'm pretty cool with it. I'm pretty cool with everything Dan said. I actually like, I actually like what Dan said more than I like what Canella said, which, you know, to me, I think Dan Morgan is going to be very, very instrumental in the first year of Canellis's head coaching tenure here in Carolina. I think he's still a little wet behind the ears. Um, cool guy, you know, cool guy, but, you know, he said Arrow is a big piece to have coming in. Okay, well, hey, games the game. Oh, I like I like that name. The game's over. Hey, man, this is my first time seeing you on the uh, on the platform. Appreciate you for pulling up. If he said that, I couldn't really hear it. But if he did say that, that's a good sign. You know that Evero is coming back. I know he mentioned earlier with um uh uh uh, uh the girl who just came back. She's a reporter. Just came back for the Carolina Panthers. She was sick for all of last year. <laughs> Yeah, rightfully so. I would have been sick too watching Frank Wright, but she was sick, had to deal with a little health issues, and they had a um one on one presser with her. And uh, he said earlier, he said, you know, having to go up against Evero's defense twice, you know, was was difficult. You know, it was always a, you had the game plan for that. Um, so I think Evero is pretty safe. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think I, I think Evero's pretty safe. And as far as the aspect of Bryce. <sighs> You know, I, I'm not gonna lie. My my thoughts are still the same with Bryce. I think that 
I think that, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. Because Bryce Young year two, if we have, a, a in, in, in this year, if we have an upgraded, upgraded offensive line, remember how, uh, uh, what's his name, Scott Ferris said, we've elevated in every aspect except for one. Well, that was a total lie. So, you know, if, if we see definite upgrade in free agency and in the draft, we get some good draft picks and Dan Morgan really, you know, cooks in the draft, but the Panthers are still not clicking. If Bryce is the issue, Bryce got to go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just be honest with you. If Bryce is the issue, he got to get up out of here, man. He got to get up out of here, man. Hey, links in the chat. Real quick, if y'all want to pull up, I'm at work. I actually got a trip. I got to go pick up Johnson and Wells, take him to Bristol, Tennessee today. So I got here a little early. What time? I was supposed to be here at 1045. I got here at 10. To make sure I was here to get on this Wi-Fi. <laughs> Win games. It's just that simple. That's a fact, Omar. That's a fact. Hey, so real quick, guys. Um, I think I'm going to open up two to four moderator spots on the platform. Um, and you know, there, they, they will be, you know, a paid moderation fee. Um, nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, but, but I, I would like to have at least two to four moderators, um, you know, on the, on, on the uh, platform, because I have to make sure that certain words, certain things just aren't said in the chat. Okay. So, um, pretty soon I'll be giving that out uh you know pretty soon memberships will be coming out on tomorrow get your memberships uh we're going to include those in with our actual trips that we're doing and this is this is in effect the travel club <laughs> panthers prime podcast travel club is in effect um uh got the first couple games already on the website i'm going to drop some more today once i get up to bristol and um for members next week wednesday you'll be able to book uh, with a member's access pass uh, to the website and get your member's pricing down. Get your deposit in, member's deposit. You know, it'd be lower than what uh, everybody else would have to pay. So, uh, yeah, enjoy that. <laughs> but let's get ready, man. This this is uh, this is going to be uh, a good off season. This is going to be a uh, great away games that are going to happen, and I'm excited about it. Poppy said Dave got the juice. Okay. Uh, we would dominate NFC South. History would be made the quicker, the quickest turnaround in NFL history. We're going to see. We're going to see, man. Everett isn't going anywhere until he competes. He completes this year. And we get out. Okay. <laughs> hey, you talking about old boy? Yeah, man. Shoot. Hey, listen. That's right. Christian Balboni. Yeah, that's her. That's her name. That's her name. Hey, if I was her, I would have been sick too, man. <laughs> Shoot. But uh, hey, man. Uh, hold on. This is a new person. I ain't never seen it. Casey, Cassie Hagerman. Really like his energy. Okay, compared to Frank, like it. Uh, I I feel like it would be easier to play for him. That's a fact. Oh, I'm about to bring you up, C. Dougie. C. Dougie, what's what up, up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What's going on with you, man? Hey, I was saying real quick. I wasn't saying like we got to chill. Like I think it's so much, so much, like. Tension. Yeah, I, and yeah, I know what you were saying. Like, I know what so, you were saying. Go ahead. <laughs> now, what I'm saying with Evero, the report was that he wanted either the Packers or the Rams job. You remember that report that came out by Joe Persons, right? Those are the okay. two teams that he was looking at. Green okay. Bay. Green Bay just hired Boston College's head coach to be their DC. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. Yeah. Then the Rams interviewed Staley, who was the ex head coach of the LA Chargers, for their DC job yesterday. Okay. So the two, that's where I was getting that. Like, yes, it could have been true by Joe Person, but if I'm not mistaken, no, that was David New. It was either David Newton or Joe Person that asked the Evero question. Nothing was like Andrew said came out of Evero's mouth. It was all hearsay. And I think a lot of people were thinking um, Evero was going to leave or we we're going to clean house on that side. I knew that wasn't right. going to happen because when Canellis came out, even before he was our head coach, if you saw the presser of the last game that we played Tampa, he gave all due respect to Evero. So we did. already knew. So we already knew once Canellis came. I said Canellis. Yeah, I think that's his name. I'm I'm thinking, I've been looking at UFC, my bad. When Canellis came, 
I'm thinking he already knew that he wanted his DC in place. And I agree with you. And I asked this question and I'm going to ask you with Evro being a DC, I asked this question on another platform yesterday. Would you re-sign Brian Burns number one? Yes or no? Uh, well, I can't answer that question yes or no okay. because because, okay. because because I have I have a little bit of a uh, soliloquy with it. So okay. I, I think when, when when you're dealing with a Brian Burns, you have to look at all options. Is Brian Burns going to get you what you need? As a pass so, rusher, so that's oh, that's oh, that, that's oh, where that's what I'm getting at. Right, I like that. Right, I like that. Right, 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 I like right. that. So if, if, if you look at if you look at him, if you feel like he's gonna get you what you need as a pass rusher, then you sign him. You resign him. If not, you go ahead and you let him walk because I don't, I don't think that you can trade him right now. Can you? Only only way we can do that is if you do that transition tag, transition tag or franchise tag, or he has to sign a contract. Do you trade him? Yeah, so I more mean, than likely, what's going to happen is we're going to do a franchise tag or a transition tag, and then let Tillis do his job. That's what Tillis is here for well, to get Tillis, to get to get Tillis, the contracts out. Well, Tillis need to go ahead and get the work yesterday. Well, think about it. This man showed up. Nobody knew Tillis was going to be there. Yeah, Tillis I ain't thought he was going to be either. He's so, supposed to be so, in Kansas City somewhere. Thank yeah. you. He's supposed <laughs> to be in Kansas City. So Does Andy Reid know you here, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that yeah. shows you, that kind of shows you that this is a serious front office because, but they did, they did say he cleared his office out knowing that he was yeah. going to leave. Yeah, but he said this last week. Yeah, but I mean, he still is a part of a um, Super Bowl appearance franchise right now. So the reason why I asked you about the Brian Burns question is because you made a statement, we need to get this run defense intact. Right. And I, like I said, the question I'm going to ask you, would you rather have, Brian Burns have a tag team teammate on the opposite end or have another player beside Brian Burns like Via Vea um, be another nose tackle? I think I, I think I think we're already set when it comes down to the interior of our defense uh, with, with the re-signing of Nick Thurman and, and uh, Derrick Brown. So I will feel more comfortable if you're going to keep Brian Burns, just get someone on the other side of him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, like I said, it's early right now, but I definitely am looking because, because, for improvements because, on that. Because you wonder why Vita Vita Vea is going to cost a lot of money. Nick Thurman. No, 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 no. I'm saying a player like so many oh, drafting oh, oh, like. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. No, got no, you, no, got yeah, got yeah. So I'm saying either drafting a player like Vita Vea because you do have those hot mollies in this upcoming draft. If you've been watching the Senior Bowl and the Shrine Game that's coming on tonight. Or would you, again? Would you have a opposite DN on the opposite side of Brian Burns? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go with the opposite DN on the other side of Brian Burns. If I, if I had to make that choice, uh, I think we I think Dan Morgan did good with, with re-signing uh, Nick Thurman, uh, mm -hmm. who who can give you that type of run stop that we need. You know, I I, I hate that we had him in rotation last year, and uh, but I, I think I think he I think he's going to take that spot that uh, Shy Tuttle had. Uh, well, that's that's the name I was going to bring up. I don't know if Thurman's going to be the starter, but I know for sure he'll be in a rotation. Well, we don't know what free agents they're going to bring in. So, again, like I said, we don't – the roster's not complete. This roster's about to be flipped backwards, forward, tossed around, shaped up, everything. Trust me. Like like the word that I like Dan Morgan said, we need dogs. We don't have a lot of dogs on this team. You don't. Point blank, you don't. Poppy said we need to address the corner – first because our front seven wasn't a problem. I don't know about that, Poppy. Yeah, you can't. No, your, your, your front, you start from the front seven and go to your back four. Right. Exactly. That, that, that's, I, that, that's, I, I, that, that's how you get pressure. Your your yeah, front man. seven can, can really protect your corners because you don't yeah. have to have great corners. And if you apply pressure, you can get underthrown balls, quarterback right. underneath the rest, and you can get a lot of interceptions. So. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just think about that twenty, you know, that twenty fifteen year, that year when when um, oh, but what's his name? Greg Hardy was going off. I mean, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. The cracking so. was cracking. <laughs> hey, that hey, that's a good quote right there. I like I like that. The cracking was cracking. The cracking I'm out of here, man. Boy. Like I said, I didn't know you were gonna be long right. this 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 uh long. Like I said, definitely be safe. I knew you were gonna be on that road, but man, like I'm I said, the pages the the pages turned. Ever and I was saying on Twitter. Um, everybody that was there, Joe, Sheena, all of them are saying Everett was staying. 
So either we didn't hear something because of the poor audio or yeah. something was said, you know, one reporter heard something and they passed it along. So Evero is back. And I think it's by default. But I think it's still a good situation for Carolina, man. Yeah, so I think definitely be safe, I think it's man. a good one. Yeah, most of them, I think it's a good a, a good situation for Carolina, man. Because yeah, for one, you keep the player, you know, the players, you know, morale going. Plus, you know, you don't have to learn a whole new system now. You keep the same system going, maybe change a, a couple things, but uh, the learning curve ain't going to be as drastic as it was last year, going from a four three to a three four, and then possibly. Maybe going back to a four three with someone else. So I think, I think and, that's a good and you made a good point. And I also think it helps with bringing retaining certain free agents Facts. with the scheme. So that is that was a big thing. And Facts. I would say uh, we will get that third round pick next year. So everybody can finally stop talking about it with him coming back. We will get additional third round going into twenty twenty five. So because we need it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With that, man, I'm out of here again. Be safe and just hit All me right. on the side, man. Most Appreciate deaf, you, man. Yeah, most deaf, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, I don't know, guys. I like more. Like I said, I like more of what Dan, what Dan Morgan said than than, than old Canellas. Oh, uh, what, what, what Poppy said. Poppy said our corners couldn't stay healthy. That that's a fact. But hey, guess what, Poppy? That was poor. That was poor roster control last year. Because that's something that I, I I beat that horn last year so hard. I said there's no reason for us not to go ahead and, and look at corners last year with JC Horn and and uh, DJ being injury prone. I think that they're going to attack that this year. You know, uh, watching the old heads talk. I don't know if you guys been watching the Panthers Twitter page, uh, but they have this little segment in in on, in on YouTube where they talk to Musa Muhammad and. You know, uh, uh, Jonathan Stewart, Luke Keekley, and um, I forgot the other guy's name. It'll come to me. But like a, like a, like a vet talk in a sense. And, man, listen, I'm pretty sure that now with Dan Morgan being the general manager, he's going to – like every pick we get, it's going to more than likely – Rucker, that's right, Mike Rucker. Every draft pick that we get and every free agent that we obtain now going forward, it's going to have that dog-like mentality, just like him, just like Luke. And they're going to be players that can contribute. So that's the expectation I'm putting on Dan Morgan as being a current, uh, a past player from the, uh, with the Carolina Panthers, having influence from players like Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis, Jonathan Stewart. Because, listen, dumb boy's going to tell you, nah, he's trash. Nah, he ain't, nah, he ain't it. He ain't him. He ain't sweet. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Well, nah. Hey, you know what? We need to look at this one. And they're gonna take those those players, those ex players' thoughts into account. Way better than what we saw with Matt Rule and with Frank Wright. So I ain't gonna lie, I'm excited, man, about the Dan Morgan side of things. I wasn't really hype on it. You know, I wasn't hype on it, but uh, you know, Dan said he wants opponents to feel pain. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the way Dan Morgan played when he was a player, man. Shoot, I get it. Danny, what's up, man? Rucker, that's right. All right, man. I hope so. Sounds good, but got to see it first. That's a fact. That's a fact. Panthers fans, do not get too excited right now. If they throw out little videos and stuff, look at it and keep going. Do not get excited until week one. If we win week one, start getting excited, okay? You see how if we win at a good – at if we have a good win, like I'm talking about like beating somebody, you know, 9 to 30-something, Bryce put up 30-something points, or just the offense put up 30-something points, or we have a convincing win, start getting happy then. Don't don't worry about preseason. Preseason is trash. And I even, I even equate, I, I'll, I'll even retract my statement. The second half of the first, of the first game of the year, the second half, that's when you make adjustments. Grade that. Because remember, the first half, you ain't got no tape. You don't know what that what that team is going to do. All you got is a, a, a drive or a series in, in the preseason, last preseason game, or maybe the second or the first, of how that first team offense or that first team defense is really going to play. You don't really know anything until the second half of that first game. So start looking at that. Then go into week two. Week three, you have a beat on how this team is going to be. Don't put too much stock into it right now, though, man. 
offer Burns a Max Crosby contract. <laughs> Who did not? Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. As long as we beat the Las Vegas Raiders, I'll be good. <laughs> hey, I don't know, man. Oh, boy, out there. Hey, they head coach, man. That dude, hey, you might as well say, man, they got 54 men on the team, man, because, hey, he, he, he be running through them, too. That's going to be a good game, man. We will be at that game. And great segue. Guys, if you had, if you didn't know, we will be going to all these away games coming up. So I'm going to throw that up there on the screen. Hey, get ready for it, man. I'm excited. I was crunching some of the numbers yesterday, man. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm very excited about what I was able to kind of get down price-wise for these trips. Get ready, man. I got the first three at the top already done. Uh, I'm waiting on the Broncos and the Raiders to uh, hotels to get me back. These three right here will be done today. The the memberships will be activated on tomorrow. The website will be ready for all members on Wednesday. All non-members, you'll have access to the website on next week, Monday. So not this Monday coming up, but the following Monday after the Super Bowl, you have access to it, all right? So get ready for that, man. It's going to be great, man. And remember, all of our memberships are going to coincide with our trips. So become a member. On tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, man. You'll be there. Okay, you from Cali? Okay. Hey, the three hotels we're looking at is the Link Hotel, Harris, Harris Casino, and the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas. Those are the three hotels I'm targeting right now uh, for this trip. All right. So, yeah, man. Come on out, man. Hang with us, man. It's going to be fun. Uh, go get a doll like Christian. Uh, yeah, from Miami. Cut Jackson. Uh, leave Jackson for one more year, man. I I I need him in Madden. I I need him in Madden. All right, leave Jackson for one more year and have Louvu Rush standing up on the other side. That's a fact. That's a fact. No, uh, we need to know something by the end of preseason. No vanilla this time. Bryce Young would be. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, Poppy. Like it's always like that. Like you may you. <laughs> Preseason to me does not tell anything, man. And it hasn't told anything for the longest. It hasn't told anything. Maybe it showed us this year how trash we was going to be. You know, maybe it showed that, but you can't really put your stock into you can't really put your stock into anything that happens in preseason. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. You just can't. All right, last comic. The game is over. What's up, Doug? All right, man. Hey guys. I got to get myself ready. I got to pre-trip this bus. I got to go to Bristol, Tennessee. When I get to Tennessee, I'll be working some more. I may come with a live either tonight or tomorrow morning uh, before I go back out on another trip. So just get ready for that, man. Okay, Preston from Canellis. I, I really enjoyed what Dave said. I mean, what Dan said. And, um, hey, we'll see, man. We'll see how they cook. Uh, singing ball, all that stuff is going on, man. And, you know, we'll see what these guys do. Free agency is coming up in a month, guys. March 13th, I believe, is uh, legal tampering and all the other stuff, you know, free agent stuff or whatever. Draft coming up, man, and I'm excited, man. It's going to be fun. So, y'all be good. This is your boy Demetrius with the PPP, Panthers Prime Podcast. You know what time it is. Let's go.